Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're going to take a look at an interesting application of McLaurin series to evaluate very difficult integrals. Now our integral here, the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the negative x squared is difficult because our function e to the negative x squared has no antiderivative. No antiderivative exists for e to the negative x squared. Now that's going to prevent us from using the fundamental theorem of calculus, but if you go a little bit further in mathematics, you can get an exact answer using something called the error function. Now that's beyond the range of a standard Calc 2 course, but it's not too much further, so you'll get to that later. And when you do, you'll find this comes out to about 0.746824. Now what we're going to find is by using a McLaurin series, we'll get an answer that's reasonably close to that. And how we do that is we take our function, here it's e to the negative x squared, and we first find a McLaurin series for it. We did that in a previous video, I have that link down below. We start with the McLaurin series for e to the x, make an algebraic replacement, and we get our McLaurin series. Now how we actually use this is we're going to plug that in and integrate it term by term. So if we do that, we get the integral from 0 to 1. We're going to replace our function with its McLaurin series, the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n divided by n factorial times x to the 2n. And we integrate that all over x. And to make this look as simple as possible, we're just going to integrate the power of x term by term. Let me go ahead and switch the order of the sum and integral. And anything involving just n's, the constants, because we're integrating with respect to x, I can pull them in front of the integral. So let's rewrite this as the sum going from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n power divided by n factorial. And now we're going to integrate x to the 2n from 0 to 1. And that integral is ridiculously simple. Let's go ahead and do that over to the side here. We have the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the 2n. And we can evaluate that with the basic power rule for antiderivatives. Add 1 to that exponent, so you'll get x to the 2n plus 1. Divide by that new power. And because this is a definite integral, we'll evaluate that from 0 to 1. And the nice thing about your bounds or limits, 0 and 1, plug in x is 0, that evaluates to 0, plug in x is 1, 1 to any power is 1, and what we should be left with here is 1 over two n plus 1. And that is the value here of the integral And we just go ahead and replace that with the value, 1 over 2n plus 1. And we get the value for our integral represented as an infinite series. Our infinite series here is the sum from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n. We have a factor of 2n plus 1 in the denominator. And that's multiplying the other factor in the denominator, n factorial. And there we go. This is the exact value for our integral represented as an infinite series. Now how we actually use this to get an approximate answer or value for our integral is we're just going to write out the first few terms and use those as an approximation. So let's go ahead and use, let's say, the first five terms. And we're just going to write them out. We're going to start with n equals 0. 
And if you plug in n as zero everywhere, you should get your first term as one. The negative one to the n factor is gonna cause your terms to alternate signs. So we should get the next term as being negative. This is now your n equals one term. Plug in now n as one everywhere. Looks like here you'll get a factor of three times one factorial. So our fraction here, we get minus one third. Next, we go to n equals two. Negative one squared will be positive. So we get plus. And now when n is two, looks like we get five times two factorial. We should get one over 10. Let's go to now n equals three. The alternating factor, negative one to the n, that'll evaluate to negative one when n is three. And just be careful now, we're gonna have with n as three, this factor down there becomes seven, three factorial six, we should get minus one over 42. And we'll go one more term to include five terms. This now ends with n equals four because we start with zero. So you have your first five terms. Looks like you're gonna get now plus. And if you plug that in, looks like you're gonna get nine here times four factorial. And if you go ahead and simplify that, you should get one divided by 216. Now, if you want, you can keep going with more terms there. The more terms you include from your infinite series, the more accurate your approximation becomes. So you would have the next one as being minus and you could keep going. But if we just take these first five terms and then add and subtract them all together, what we'll find is this comes out to approximately an answer that's pretty close to that. We get 0.747487. And that is pretty darn close to the value you get with more complicated mathematics, again, the error function. And that works for pretty minimal work there just using a McLaurin series, very basic operations. We integrate term by term and we get a pretty reasonable answer to what you would get, again, using more complicated mathematics. Hope you enjoyed this video. There are a lot more applications for McLaurin series, which we'll have in future videos. If you're enjoying the content, support the channel, like and subscribe.